Hey guys, me Dreadle Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update, and it is a powder day across parts of Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado. We'll start in Colorado. This is Aspen Snowmass up there. This is the Aspen Highlands uh, camera, and a spread of new snow in the last 24 hours, anywhere from like three to eight inches up there between Snowmass, Buttermilk, the Highlands, and Aspen Mountain itself. And you can see it's still snowing. So uh, this main storm system will be exiting Colorado today. Now, on the back side, we're going to establish a northwest flow for pretty much the entire day. And once that kicks in, that's how we're going to accumulate additional snow today across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. So there's more coming. Loveland ski area, you've got uh, six inches of new snow in the last 24 hours. Um, and you will get some additional accumulation today with this northwest flow once it kicks in. All right, to Utah, the Wasatch Front. This is Big Cottonwood Canyon up there at Solitude reporting a foot of snow in the last 24 hours. Alta ski area got nailed 18 inches in the last 24 hours, a storm total of 20. Um, you will probably have some light additional accumulations today, but really for Utah, it's about the next storm system coming in, afternoon, evening of the 5th through the 6th and to early on the 7th. Um, let me show you radar across the west. So there are two things to mention here. Storm system, trying to exit Colorado with some snow kind of wrapping around the area of low pressure through Wyoming, Utah. And then the second storm is starting to move on shore uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so that would be the, the next storm system. And there's actually another one behind that um, as well. Let me take you into Colorado. Uh, so blizzard conditions across the far eastern plains of Colorado, parts of Nebraska, northwest Kansas. A lot of wind with this storm system. We talked about the wind potential yesterday with sustained winds most of today in, in some of these places of 35, 40, 45, 50 mile an hour for like six hours. Um, but things are starting to dry out across the front range of Colorado. But on the back side of this, now we're going to start to establish this northwest flow across the central and northern mountains of Colorado. In the northeast, a warm storm system is inbound. When this thing moves in this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, it's mainly going to be rain for a lot of the northeast. The ski areas of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, it looks really warm with some of these freezing levels moving up to about 7,000 feet. All right, let me uh, look at the uh, the setup here across the west. So this is water vapor satellite imagery. And this is at low level. So oranges and reds are going to be your drier air. The moisture's in the whites and the blues. There's our storm system right there, that panhandle storm system exiting Colorado. It's going to be a day of severe weather out in the, uh, the heartland in the deep south. Clash of air masses, jet stream support. Now back here, that's our next storm system, and it's already throwing a cold front into the uh, the west coast there's another storm behind it so all of this is going to be an important player in the extended forecast important players because once this flow establishes itself everything is going to move into the west coast and then eventually transition into the uh, the inner mountain west all right here are my bullet points for this morning so storm system today lingers with this northwest flow kicking into colorado and the central to northern mountains lingering snow over parts of wyoming and utah this morning then the next storm system, 3-5, 3-6, 3-7, makes its move into the interior. Uh, another storm system behind that for 3-10, 3-11, and 3-12. My snow timeline, best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tall in the Northeast. So these are the dates where the odds are the highest you're going to have a powder day, in other words. Uh, so for the Wasatch Light today, and then your next shot of heavy snow, and it's going to be heavy, comes in afternoon, evening 3-5 through the morning of 3-7. Tetons, uh, light today and tomorrow, and then heavy on 3-6, heavy on 3-11. And Colorado, moderate today, additional accumulations, and then heavy 3-6, 3-7, moderate on 3-11. Look at an interior BC. I noticed a definite shift. Not quite as rich of a flow late in the period. So it's moderate today, tomorrow, late today, tomorrow, light on 3.8, and then it's moderate 3.10, 3.11, instead of being heavy. So that did change some of my totals across interior BC. Pacific Northwest, uh, a brief moderate to heavy shot uh, between today and tomorrow, and then heavy, it's a waiting game until 3.10, 3.11, and uh, 3.12. Um, okay, let me take you to Alta, Utah. Let's drill down a little bit here into Alta. This is effective on this model, about 9,000 feet of elevation. 
So a little bit of tiny leftover snow here this morning. Winds are blowing 30 to 40. High temps today at about 23 at 9,000. Then the start of Wednesday, March 5th, is dry, but snow builds into the afternoon, becomes heavy overnight throughout the day on the 6th, and I think it probably trickles into early on the 7th. This model cranks out over two feet of accumulation with this next storm system. Some of these wind gusts are going to be close to 50 miles per hour. There is a brief warm-up out ahead of this thing to 29 on Wednesday, and then the temperature falls a bit to the middle 20s, and then it drastically falls the afternoon of the 6th into the 7th. So the bottom line is this next storm system means business. It's got heavy accumulations coming with this thing. Okay, look, jet stream pattern here. Um, let me start this animation at the beginning. So we'll start it today. A couple of things to mention. You can see the dip in the jet stream. What I'm looking for here are the brighter colors. The oranges, the reds, that's going to be your stronger winds up at about 30,000 feet jet stream level. The big trough, the big dip in the jet coming out of Colorado, the panhandles, that's our storm system moving into the heartland. Next storm system, you can already see the dip in the jet over the Pacific approaching the West Coast. Here it comes. There's Wednesday. Now, by the time we get into Thursday, it's it's already on shore. I mean, it's 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 moving into the interior states at this point, moving into Nevada, into Utah, into Idaho, into Wyoming, and eventually into Colorado. Uh, and there we go. It continues to make its move, and it's squarely moving through Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona at that point, and then moving out into the, the heartland. You can already see the next storm system dipping the jet coming off the Pacific. Um, here we go by uh, Sunday. And into Monday, it's moving into California, and then it makes its move. And it's a little more of a southern tracker, moves towards the four corners Tuesday into Wednesday. But that will bring us another shot of good snow. So there are there's storm systems lined up here down the road. Here's snow forecast, uh, the snow forecast over time. So on this, your light blues are going to be your light accumulations of under three inches. Greens are three to six, yellow six plus, reds ten plus. So I'll start this out at 11 o'clock today. Um, and leftover snow through Wyoming, a little bit in Utah, and certainly in Colorado, and the storm system's moving out. All right, so by tomorrow morning, it's moving up into the, into the, uh, the northeast, where it's mainly going to be rain. Uh, our next storm system comes out of California, Nevada, Oregon, and starts to amplify. Snow ramps up into the morning of Thursday, March 6th, with some pretty good accumulations there across the Wasatch and even southern Utah, and Arizona on, gets in on this action. And then it's Colorado's turn. By the time we get to lunchtime on Thursday, continues into Friday, and then that storm system kind of moves out into the plains. There's a little trailing sort of uh, area of low pressure that will take a southern track. You can see it right there through the four corners late Thursday into early Friday with some pretty good snow through a lot of Arizona and northern New Mexico, and then that exits. Then, here comes our next storm system. Pretty good flow up into the Pacific Northwest, by the way. Um, so this is, um, this is early on Monday, March 10th. Um, okay, here's the 11th. Here comes our next storm system. You can see the snow beginning to develop. Uh, so there's late on uh, Wednesday, late on Tuesday, March 12th. Here's early March 12th. Heavy snow for the Sierra. Lots of snow for Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. And then that moves through the Rockies. Here we are, lunchtime on um, afternoon lunchtime on uh, Friday, March 14th. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different storm systems lined up in this, in this forecast. Here are my numbers. All right, so all of today through the ninth. Remember, there is some residual snow falling across uh, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. But uh, this next storm system is going to be big, thinking potentially, you know, a foot or more in the, uh, the Sierra. In the Wasatch, I've still got one to two feet yet to go on top of what you've already got. Um, and recall that one forecast model does crank out even more than that. Looking at probably uh, 10 to 20 inches through Arizona Snow Bowl and Bryan Head. In Colorado, 10 to 20 inches yet to go. Um, with, with potentially some places pushing 20, maybe 24 inches. Northern New Mexico, 8 to 12 inches. Uh, up in Wyoming, another 10, 12 over Hagadon. Anywhere from three to six in Montana. Very little for Sun Valley and Brundage. You're really out of the flow, but Schweitzer North could see snow accumulation around six there in Red Mountain, Fernie. I've still got 10 to 12 up through Kicking Horse and Revelstoke, but those numbers are definitely not as big as they were the last couple of days. But the flow looks awfully good for Marmot Basin and could see eight down in Sunshine. 
The Pacific Northwest, yeah, it's not bad. Mount Baker to Blackcomb, anywhere from one to two feet, and then it's much, much lighter as you go south of Stevens uh, down to Timberline and Bachelor. All right, so that takes us through the 9th. Here's the northeast. Again, a lot of rain between this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow, but then we might get some snow beyond that. Anywhere from 2 to 7 inches of accumulation. New York, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Uh, I don't have any accumulation in Massachusetts, so it's just an awfully warm forecast there. All right, guys, we'll end on the big western map here. We've got some residual snow and then a couple of good storm systems yet to go across the west. So get out there and enjoy it and be safe. Take care, guys. Thanks for tuning in here, and have a great day.